What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Getting Buzz. Yep, I'm your host, Howard Bender. With me, of course, you know him, you love him, at Fighting Chance on the old Twitter machine. It's the guy behind you, Ryan. The guy behind you. That's who we're talking about. Ah. What's up, dude? How are you? What's going on? What's new? Um, have you watched the the Big Brother episode yet? I mean, I did I watch it this morning? Uh, it's basically it's rained here in New York for about uh, I don't know, about thirty six straight hours now. But other than that, I did watch Big Brother for my big fantasy Big Brother game, which was way more uh, expo- uh, people getting into it than I thought. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I really haven't really watched the show. I just, it's like something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I got a little help with the point system. So it, it's, uh, I liked it. I liked it. Nice. Nice. Well, you know, all right. So for those of you who don't know, Ryan, who usually runs like a fantasy survivor game now is doing a fantasy big brother game. And, uh, we, you know, we each draft four members of the house, uh, and it's a four, you know, it's a four team league. Four members of the house, 16 players, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what is the scoring, actually? Like, that's something I don't know. Uh, that is, it's it's way too I drafted without even knowing. It's it's way too much for me to just list it here, and I don't have it off the top of my head. There's, you know, head of household points, if the veto, and, and who's getting nominated for eviction, and then, you know, when you get evicted. And so there's, there's a lot that goes into it. I, I tweeted it once. I'll, I'll send it to you after we're done. Yeah, yeah, please do. Please do. Now, here's the funny thing. And, you know, I was telling you about this this morning. For those of you who, uh, you know, who have watched Big Brother, um, Frenchie, who, spoiler alert, um, won the head of household. Um, I know him, which is really kind of funny because when I, when we were picking our, our players and we were drafting our players, like he really he jumped off the page to me. I thought maybe it was because, you know, like a hillbilly from Tennessee kind of thing. And those yeah. guys, you those guys tend to play really well in Big Brother. Like okay. they just seem to do it. They're they're personable, they're nice, they're polite, they're respectful. Um, you know, and 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 so like, you know, that happens, but they're also in good shape. But there was just something about him, and I was like, so he, I'm I'm in on him, I'm in on him. And the whole Frenchie thing sounds very familiar. Uh, And then I I saw the episode, I'm watching the episode, and he starts saying who he is, and he's ex-Air Force, and, you know, farming, and then all of a sudden it just, like, hit me. And I went to his Twitter handle, and sure enough there, Farmer Frenchie follows you. And I was like, I knew it was this dude. He did the pie bet. He took a pie to the face. That's awesome. Um, He's just, he's always been a super nice guy. He's hit me up for fantasy advice. Cool. So I tweeted him, here's the here's the hope, here's the goal, that we can get Frenchie the Farmer on getting buzzed once the Big Brother House uh, event is over. Now, this is all going on now, so he's not going to see this for a while, but that would be really cool if we could if we get that on. Yeah, and, and you know, he's actually who I picked in my, uh, my group also first, so... Uh, it's very cool that we both have him, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, lasso him on here. I mean, if he's into fantasy football and he's reached out to you before, I don't see any why not. We'll see if he's, uh, another spoiler, $750,000 richer uh, as they tacked on a little to the pool this year. But uh, that would be that would be, pr- that would be pretty awesome if we could do that. But, yeah, I had about 20 groups of four, I think, uh, all drafting and, and scoring. So it's uh, it's going to be a good time, I think. I, I wish I had known this earlier than like the whole thing started. I mean, I don't know how how you know how often they're taping or whatever, but I tweeted out to him. I said, if you're in the Big Brother house, who's drafting your fantasy football teams? <laughs> right? Yeah, because this goes, I think, until September. Right? I think this goes right into Survivor. I think like they ends when Survivor starts in the fall. So there you go. Well, for, root for Farmer Frenchie because not only is he a nice guy. But Ryan and I will also win our uh, our fantasy leagues, and Perfect. and what's more important than you and I winning our fantasy leagues? <laughs> when it comes to fantasy, Big Brother, nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, folks, great show planned for you here today. We're going with uh, we're we're bringing in Jen Piacenti. You guys obviously know Jen. Boy, these glass. I never wear these glasses on the show here because I can't see without them, and I didn't feel like putting in my contacts. They're dirty. It's a mess. It's a hot she, mess, dude. 
It's the reuniting of the, what? The ruler and the beef tonight? The ruler and the beef. Wow. We haven't, I haven't dealt with that one in a while. Well, in honor of that and Jen joining us, how about a little fantasy karaoke? Huh? So here's, here's the game. This is what we're going to do. And so, uh, you know, very much looking forward to it. We're going to give Jen the name of a player. Jen's going to do this for us also. She's going to, she's going to pick a player or two. If, uh, if you like the player, then you have to sing his praises. If you don't like the player, well, then you can just rant. And you just say what kind of a piece of garbage a guy is or whatever it and is like that. The whole audience hopes I get one that I just want to rant about and not sing because nobody wants me to hear me sing. Nobody wants to hear me sing either. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard you sing before. It's not that bad. Right. Please. I, I, yeah, I said it's listen. not that bad. I didn't say we, are, we are men of action. Lies do not become us. <laughs> Uh, very good Princess Bride reference. I appreciate that. My pleasure. Count My pleasure. All right. Well, before we get to what's going on in the wonderful world of uh, of sports and fantasy sports, obviously, I got to give a plug to the best draft guide on the market right now. I dare you to beat it. Um, the Fantasy Alarm Draft Guide, the ultimate cheat sheet, that dropped Friday, uh, this morning, right? Because this is uh, airing uh, on Friday night. So, the draft guide and the cheat sheet already there. M amazing content rolling out here in the draft guide. Ryan did the super flex league draft strategy article, um, which is fantastic. Evar Anderson with the IDP rankings. Jim Bowden's got rankings. Adam Ronis is going to have rankings. Uh, player profiles from Colby Conway and Jen Piacenti. I mean, this is this sucker is loaded. Absolutely loaded. <laughs> I think one of the best part about it is the auction values too, as they are like gaining popularity more and more of them. I know you have, you know, based on a, a price list, uh, you know, who you should be spending what on, which I think is completely invaluable, especially for you or, you know, newer to auctions, you know, uh, kind of a price range of what you should be looking for on each guy. So you're not getting into those bidding wars and overspending and shooting your whole budget. Like this gives you a real nice, uh, you know, dollar by dollar value of which guys you should be targeting around which dollar value. You definitely give a read to Justin Fensterman's article on auction strategy. He's the man. Right? Loves it. loves it. Absolutely loves it. Although I, when I was reading it, I was like, ah, I taught that to Fence D. <laughs> I did. We, like, uh, when you're, I when do, you're bidding, I, when, you know, and it's like, you're going back and forth, it's just you and another guy, then just bid to the four or to the nine. And put the onus on them to be the one to say, this is a $30 player or this is a $25 player. Like once you say like 24 or 29, it immediately changes that per the other person's mindset. And they're like, oh, man, I didn't want to go $30 on these guys. So all of a sudden it kind of like it, it, it takes them out of it. It's a, it's a strategy I've employed for years and years and years. Fenty actually saw it in action during an auction draft that we were doing, and he was like, wow. <clears throat> wow, what was that? Yeah, I do the uh, Family Times podcast with him and our illustrious producer, Matt Sells, and Fenty loves to talk about auctions. Like, every chance he gets, he works auctions into the, into the show sheet. So, yeah, absolutely. Not only does he do them, he does them well. Uh, as Clearly, you're his mentor, and, and so, yeah, his article is definitely top shelf. He's got some great stuff in there, no doubt about it. No doubt. I love the way he ends it too. I don't no spoiler alert, but don't leave money on the table. Right? Boom. All caps. Can't take it with you. <laughs> the worst. The worst. Anyway, draft guide. Go to fantasyalarm.com slash draft now. All right. And I think that promo code draft now still works also. So it's 20% off of the draft guide. If you're looking for um, everything, seasonal NFL, um, DFS NFL, draft guide, cheat sheet, everything that, that we offer from Fantasy Alarm and DFS Alarm, go to fantasyalarm.com slash get NFL. And it's right there for you. Everything you could possibly want. So Start off with a little shameless plug for Fantasy Alarm gear, guides, stuff like that. And now let's move on to what's going on in the news. 
Well, Scott Fishbowl. That's what's in the news. Um, Brian, what 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 conference are you in? I'm in the Weezer Conference. The Weezer Conference. That's right. So, how's your draft going? Like, where are you in your draft? I am on deck for my 17th pick right now. Uh, 17. Oh yeah, dude. My group is the best freaking group. I know we're not the fastest, but everyone is on it. They're cool people. Our chat is like entertaining and, and like they're all really really cool people we have a guy from australia in there and we're still in the 17th round like i'm a, i'm i could be on the clock right now i'm not sure but like i was on deck uh when we started so uh yeah 17th round right now i love it these people are awesome i'm having a great time wow 17 so last year so here's the funny thing is like because i'm talking to so many people a lot of people who are new to the fishbowl a lot of people who are like you know, I mean, it always happens when somebody doesn't make their pick and, you know, then the, the community's like, oh, this person's big timing us, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it, it's super aggravating. As somebody whose league finished first last year, right? I was in the clue division. Nice. Oh, son of a. Mm. So I was waffling between two wide receivers, right? I'm picking 10th. Okay. I'm here in the 10th round. We're only in the 10th round. Still not bad. So I'm like, all right, I'm looking at some wide receivers here. And, you know, Michael Gallup, Michael Pittman, uh, they're both sitting there available. And I'm like, all right, well, I can probably, let me see. You know, Pittman was all the way down. He's like buried, buried mm -hmm. on my fantasy league. I was like, let me grab Gallup here and then get Pittman on the other side. The dude who's on the turn Took Pittman and Antonio Brown with his pick, so... Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Oh, well. Like I said, we have... Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Finish. Oh, I, I don't know. What was I going to say? I don't know. I don't so, know like either. I said, we have a guy who's Australian in our... And he was telling us... He's telling us some, you know, things about Australia. So, for getting buzzed, we would say we are on the piss. On the piss. Cheers to being on the piss. So, I am on the piss. Um, we are getting on the piss tonight. That is uh, Australian. That's your Australian lesson for the evening. I think it's at Arch <laughs> NFL. Uh, if you, the guy's pretty cool. We're having a good time. He's, he's got a young kid, so it wakes him up at like 5 in the morning. So it's like really done a good job of keeping the draft going, despite whatever the time difference is. Nice. Um, what I was saying before is so we finished first last year. And we literally sat there for like two weeks, like <laughs> complete FOMO, right? Because – Everybody's still tweeting about their picks and everybody's tweeting their images. Now, I mean, I don't get into that whole thing. I think I did tweet out what my first three picks were because it was the first night of, of the Scott yeah, Fishbowl. Of course. And I was like, all right, here we go. This is how I started and we'll figure out how I finish later on. So that's what she said. That, <laughs> did she or did she just roll over in disgust and say, thanks? Probably, probably more likely that. All right, welcome to 20 years of marriage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but anyway, like, you know, and I and I keep saying to people, I'm like, listen, like, I'm the, I hate slow drafts. I've always hated slow drafts. I've spoken out more against slow drafts probably than anybody else, like, on Sirius XM. I'm always like, fuck them. They're terrible. Can't stand them. Garbage. They're wasting time. It's always, it's, it's, you know, my pick comes up and it's always inconvenient. And then I got, then all of a sudden, if I, if I don't get to it now, then I forget about it and whatever. Now I'm like, I'm like, you know, Mr. Zen. I'm like, hey, man, enjoy the experience. Like, just have fun. I finished first last year and, man, it sucked for like two weeks. There's just, there's nothing to do. Can't trade in the league. So, you know, what am I doing? I'm just staring at my roster. So just kind of chill and enjoy it. And, you know, and some people are like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. The other people are like, no way. Oh, God damn it. Why, why? What the hell? Why can't you make your stupid pick? Blah, 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 blah. Nuts. Nuts. So how's your team look? 17 Pretty rounds. Yeah. I mean, I'll just hit the highlights. I'll go through the whole thing. I've got Dak Please. Prescott and Joe, Joe Burrow at quarterback. So real happy there. Uh, I got Chubb, Najee Harris, uh, Montgomery, James Robinson, and Kenyon Drake are my main uh, running backs. Then I went three in a row: Lamb, Ayuk, Sutton uh, at 
at wide receiver. So I waited till 11th round for tight end, which is, you know, this is tight end premium. So I was a little, if I ended up with Hunter Henry, Komet, and Zach Ertz, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I am right now. I, like, I don't think I've, like, the only problem is my third quarterback, you know, I waited a little too long. I've got a lock. I hope he, you know, wins the job at this point, which I'm not really confident that he will. Uh, but, you know, hopefully Burrow and Dak Prescott both coming off season-ending injuries, although both looking like they should be ready. Uh, hopefully I won't need that third quarterback very much. But other than that, uh, I'm real happy with how it's turned out so far. Yeah, it definitely sounds really nice over there. I, you know, I, I was very much, like last year, I not only did I wait on quarterbacks last year, but I also, I didn't get that third guy. So God, I remember who the hell was my number one quarter. I can't remember who my number one quarterback was, but Jimmy Garoppolo was my other guy. Yeah. He was my yeah, second yeah, yeah. last year too. So lost him. And then I didn't have anybody, you know, sitting there as like the number three, like a clear cut number three. So, yep. you know, it kind of screwed me over. So when I saw, you know, six running back, six uh, quarterbacks off the, off the board right before me in the first round, I was like, all right, I'm not going to be a pain in the ass about this. Let me just rip the Band-Aid and just get it out of the way. I told you. I don't think there's an anti-upper in this show. I told you quarterbacks are going crazy this year. Crazy. Flex. So I yeah. took Justin Herbert. Good pick. I love it. Me then too. it came back around to me for the second one, and I was like, man, I was really – I was thinking about taking a, another quarterback and doing like a, like an Aaron Rodgers or a, or, a, or a Ryan – even even like, you know, boosting up like a Ryan Tannehill type guy just because of the format but there was george kittle sitting right there in the second round third pick in the second round so i was like ah oh, man i was like all right so i grabbed kittle uh and then i went you know running backs and it was like you know i got acres i got mike wow. davis very nice so those are my two then and then all of a sudden i was like i was debating whether or not to go for Another quarterback here or all this wide receiver depth, like just got pushed down, like pushed down like crazy. Yep. So I was like, do I take that second quarterback or DK Metcalf? So I took DK Metcalf and then I came back around and I was like, oh, here we go. So I grabbed, I wanted Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. right? I wanted to do with these next two picks. I wanted to do Carson Wentz and Sam Darnold. Right. And have that as my, as my three guys, Herbert, Wentz and Darnold. Beautiful. Family. Yeah. From what I from what I've seen with this Carolina offense and from what I, you know, I know about, you know, Sam Darnold and everything. This is gonna be don't sleep on the Panthers offense. I'll just say that. Don't sleep on the Panthers offense. Um somebody took Wentz, took a third quarterback. Wow. Already. And he took Wentz. So yeah, he ended up with like cousins, Mayfield, and Wentz. Um, so I was like, all right, let me grab Darnold here. And then I was like, all right, a lot of picks going in between. Not much else sitting there on the uh, on the on the quarterback list. If I don't get a third quarterback, I am going to be screwed again. So I took the best guy who was like sitting out there available. <sighs> Daniel Jones. I mean, it, he could be OK. I, I really could do be. Think I do think he's going to improve. I don't think we've seen the best of Daniel Jones yet. Uh, you know, they went out and, and at least they, I don't know what you think of Kadarius Tony. You know, or, or, you know, brought, brought him in the first round. Barkley comes back. He's a dynamic pass catcher out of the backfield. I just think I, I feel like you know. I know this, I'm in New York, so obviously I hear some New York sports radio, and it's always like it's like three or four plays a game. That he just needs to tighten up, and he's he's good. I and mean, he can run. I mean, not I mean he can fall down when he runs. We saw that last year too. But I mean, he can <laughs> run. He has the ability. It's just I don't know if the game still needs to slow down for him a little bit more. Uh, you know, the the team has kind of been a mess his first two years. So I do think that there's better days still ahead for Daniel Jones. As my third quarterback, I felt fine with it. Yeah, I did. Oh, it's definitely was your third. I yeah. definitely felt fine. Um, and then, you know, then I was like, okay, well now I got to attack like wide receiver or, and, and running back for the next couple of picks. But the running back situation is so bleak. It's so ugly, um, that I just, you know, Robbie Anderson paired him up with, uh, with Sam Darnold, Mike Williams. Did I lose you? Did you freeze? No, I'm just not the biggest Mike Williams fan. Screw you, dude. Much <laughs> like, right. Up yours. I'm Much sorry. like Mike Williams. 
I don't know. I just feel like he's a touchdown or nothing. I, I just I know Herbert's got the huge arm. I know it's it, the abilities there. I just I just see it. it's a lot of average in, in my opinion. I, I'm, I've never really been a huge fan of his. All right. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You 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 can be wrong sometimes. It's That's good. true. Yeah, um, and then Michael Gallup. Do like that one. So so that's what I have there. And look at that. As we're talking here, I'm on the clock. Live pick. Ready? Oh, there you go. Go for look, it. What, I, you know, since that dude took Pittman, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I think I, I should just. I, I I think I'm just safer going running back here. I mean, I, I have been. I like to call it running back robust is my been my philosophy all draft season long. Uh, and I did it again here. I am still not on the clock. The guy in front of me is taking a while, but I mean, I don't think you can get enough. I have five running backs. Uh, um, yeah. Six running backs. I'm sorry. And 16 picks. I, I just can't get enough because the, the depth and the injuries, I, I just, I loaded up as much as I could. Was like literally scaring me and i was actually talking to adam ronis on the uh on the Annie up podcast and i was like dude i only have two. i'm like in the 11 i'm like going into the 10th round i'm like i only have two running backs like i never only have two running backs so uh i'm gonna live pick it right now are you uh, i i'd say can you guess it but you have no idea because every draft board is so different right uh i'm going with quadzilla A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon, not a bad pick. I also I, took a, a running back in the 10th. I took Kenyon Drake in the 10th. You know, he's still on the board. I thought about whether or not to take him. Um, yeah, I just, ah, I just don't, I, I, I'm i like, I'm torn. I mean, when you get to this, you're, you're, you're kind of like, everybody's got warts and you got to figure out who it is. My only feeling with, with Dillon is obviously if AJ, if uh, Aaron Jones gets hurt, He's well, gold. that's great. That's gold. Boom for me. Um, they they worked Jamal Williams pretty heavily last year, right? Yeah. I mean, they gave More him a I good thought. amount of touches. So no Jamal for Williams in Green Bay. A.J. Dillon, maybe he's got some good standalone value, and he's more than just a more than just a handcuff. So we shall see. I just need to need to pound the depth right now and uh, and make that happen. Um, Looking like I might have to go uh, tight ends again soon as well, because uh, Mike Kosicki came off right before me. Fun stuff. I gotta tell you, man. I uh, I just having a great time doing the Scott Fishbowl. Having a great time. Just like usually, I'm like I'm such a baseball guy, or I've been such a baseball guy, and I've always been there on serious, being like, "Um, why are we talking about football in June?" But like, I mean, that was that was that was me. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. I've softened my stance on that. I understand that football drives the bus. But, I mean, even so, there are more callers during football, you know, when you're talking football. There's just, I mean, there's some exciting stuff. There might not be a lot of action going on right now, but these drafts are definitely, you know, it's FSGA draft week. Yep. Oh, that's right. That's right. You, you that. took Adam Troutman from me in that draft, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I, was, I was pitching the perfect game. Right. And there it was just all set. And then stupid Ryan Hallam with the bunt single that just catches the pitcher off guard on screws up my perfect game. He took Adam Trotman for no apparent reason. And I got a very nasty message from you after that, uh, which I wasn't expecting. I, my virgin eyes had not seen those words before. I was not prepared for that kind of message. I had to look on the internet to see exactly what it meant, but uh, it was not. Did nice. you did you turn it over to uh, to the HR department over at Fantasy? I did Alliance? yeah, I did. I was like, ooh, this is. I don't want to be the guy, but this is what this is what the Roto Buzz guy said to me. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get it. You'll get a call tomorrow. They they were they were probably like. We've been called that by him too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it washes off. It's it always just, does. It's just dirt. It's just dirt. It's not poo. It's dirt. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. A little Scott Fishbowl update there and a live pick. Who doesn't love that? Uh, in other sports news, hey, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they won the Stanley Cup. Did you know? 
Yes, only because that's my job is projections. So I knew, yes, I was like, yay, NHL is over for the year. <laughs> that's that my extent of my caring about the NHL. Some stupid announcer said that Shohei Otani should stop pitching for the rest now, of the season. I, and what was the rationale for that, man? Well, his name was Brian Kelly, I think it was. Jim Jim Bowden actually knows him. He, if it's Brian Kelly, he said, like, he came from a Kingston, is like a, a Kingston, New York station. I know Brian. I mean, I don't know him personally, but I know Brian Kelly. Okay, well, you know him and uh, him and Alan Fish working together on the uh, on the radio. No, he was in Kingston, and he was on a TV station down here. Uh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh, you know, because the Angels aren't going anywhere; they're not going to like make the playoffs or win anything. So there's not really any reason to rest him, and he's dominating outside of that game with the Yankees where he didn't get out of the first inning. So I don't see any reason why we shouldn't do anything but celebrate this guy for what he's doing. Because what is this, our ninth show? And we've bitched about baseball in eight of them? Yeah. Like, it's one of the few positive things that's going on in Major League Baseball right now. So, honestly, he should be highlighted on the news, like, once an hour for what he's doing. Between, I believe, 32 home runs he hit, his 32nd yesterday, and his, I believe his ERA is under three still, even with that blow up. I mean, this is something that should be... Uh, no, that blow-up, I think, gave him... A, I think it bumped it to, like, a 3.6. Okay. It was, that was it was at, like, a 2.8, and then it went up to a 3.6 after right. that beating. He gave up a, a lot, and I think one-third of an inning, so I don't, I don't, I believe it. Uh, but, yeah, he should be... Uh, Rob Manfred should be kissing every orifice on Shohei Otani's you know, body this year for trying to give something positive to this godforsaken sport right now. Something positive. Wow. Good luck with that. Um, are you watching the Conor McGregor fight this weekend? No. Uh, I, once he fought Floyd, I was kind of done with McGregor. I feel like he went from a legitimate fighter to, I don't want to say a joke, but more of a sideshow. I know these guys have had a couple of good fights before, but uh, he kind of, he's. I think he just read his own press too much. I think he's uh, way too full of himself, and I, I don't know that he's as motivated or quite the fighter he was when he like, kind of took the world by storm. I'm done with him, too. Been done with him. <clears throat> Anybody who is like that dude's been on more like retirements and return tours than share. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. So I'm done with him. What about Wimbledon? You a tennis guy? I was when I was in like high school. I, not anymore. I, I looked, you know, I saw I heard Roger Federer lost uh, and I looked. I know the women's final soon. I didn't know either woman who was in it. And I have no idea where the men are. All I know is it's in England and it's played in grass and I've lost track. I feel like the 90s was kind of, not obviously the golden age, but the golden age of tennis in my lifetime, I, I lost track. You know, back in the day, like Bjorn Borg was, was this guy I watched and Jim Courier with the wacky, you know, the hat. But I haven't really Borg paid attention. Borg was way before uh, Courier. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Borg okay. was like... Wasn't the Leon Borg was like, uh, yeah, that was 80s. That was like Connors and, and McEnroe. Like that. Right, well, I guess I watched tennis longer than I thought then. Right? Seriously, look at you. I mean, I, Jim Courier, um, was that like Pete Sampras time? Yes, yeah. And, you know, he was never as good, but. Pete Sampras was like the hairiest man in America. I, I don't know if you remember that. He just was like a, just a wildebeest. And somehow he landed the teacher from Happy Gilmore. How does that happen? How did he get, uh, what was her name? Veronica Vaughn. Veronica Vaughn, yeah. How did so Pete Sampras get Veronica Vaughn? Want to touch the hiney. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know that's his wife? Or was I did it? not know that it was Pete Sampras' wife. She likes him hairy, apparently. Yeah, I mean, they might not be at this, but they were married at one point. We'll have to go back and look at that. Look at the IMDb. Someone I, I'll, I'll I'll check it out. In the meantime, though, uh, because we got Jen Piacenti, who's going to be joining us uh, in a few moments here, it is time. Let's get to it here with our uh, our getting buzzed top ten. All right, Ryan. So here we go. Getting buzzed top ten. Now, our good friend Jen Piacenti, who's going to be joining us, is helping out a friend of hers. In where Hawaii right now, right? Like getting the house ready, and she's gonna give you stories about scrubbing mold and cleaning out air filters and stuff like that. But the bottom line is, it's in Hawaii, all right? Yeah. It's beautiful. I've never been, 
and I can only imagine how beautiful it is. I would uh, scrub mold and change air filters and air conditioners if it meant being in Hawaii. I was there once. It is amazing. And I would, yes, I would do terrible, terrible things to go back. Well, there you go. I don't want to know what those things are. I don't know if I'm ready to know what those things are. But our top 10 list tonight, top 10 places we want to go on vacation. Or that we or we think are, are good vacation destinations. Because the first one here, it's like my backyard. It's Ryan's backyard. Uh Number 10, we'll just get right to it. New York City, the Big Apple. You can make it there, you can make it anywhere. It's the city that never sleeps. I can give you a billion cliches over and over and over again. But the bottom line is that there's no place like New York. And it, it's just a must. If you're if, if it's you're in this lifetime and you're capable of going to New York, that's where you got to go. You got to go. I was, I believe, and I've lived upstate my entire life. I think I was 30 before I went there for the first time. Shockingly enough, I was invited to. Yeah, I was invited to a Bloomberg sports event when they first got into the fantasy industry. However short that was, that was the first time that I had been to New York City. Uh, great food, some great sights, uh, Broadway, sports, everything like that. As someone who lives, you know, 100 miles away, it's not something that I venture to all that much. Uh, but I can definitely see the draw from people who aren't that close, for sure. Grew up there, loved it there. You know, I go back every year, well, except for COVID. Uh, but I'll be there this year. Nice. Um, so New York's at number 10. Number nine, uh, we're going to stay in the U.S. here. Uh, and go down to Narlands, right? The Big Easy. Have you been? No, I have not. Me neither. And it's like the greatest place to go for music. Uh, you know, and I just, I, I've got a friend who lives there. What's um, with you? Well, the, you know what it is? I'll tell you exactly what it is. One, I'm not a huge drinker. Mm. Number two, I hate crowds. That explains it then. And, and you know, like go for like Jazz Fest or Mardi Gras or whatever. It's it's mobbed. And if you go off season, it's hot as balls. Yeah. And I can't do it's, that. It seems like Mardi Gras would be like something to see once. But it seems like it's just, you know, a lot of people pressed together, uh, plastic beads, tons of drinks. And as good as some of that might sound, I think it's a kind of a one and done kind of thing. Yeah, probably. At my age. I mean, even in your 20, I probably would want to do it all. Oh, if it was in my 20s, dude, I'd be down there every every Mardi Gras, right? It's, who cares? Give me more alcohol, give me more drugs, uh, play the music, and oh, look, boobies everywhere. I'm like the you bead master. Wrong. I'm just giving you them out. I'm like, with boobies. I'm like Oprah with the beads. You get a bead. You get a bead. You get a bead. Um, take us to number eight, my friend. This is another place I have not been, but we will head to Europe for Greece, which just appears to be an absolutely beautiful place to go. Uh, I do know people who have been there. I've heard nothing but wonderful things. And one day, uh, that is definitely some place I'd love to go. Apparently, the, the men are very hairy there, too. Pete Sampras would fit in perfectly. He would. I had a friend of mine from college who uh, who was Greek, like hardcore Greek. Harry's like you know we were he was uh in, in the theater we like shared a dressing room and i was oh, like bad. dude take off your fur coat let's go <laughs> gotta get changed he's like i'm cha he's like i'm not wearing a shirt come on <laughs> but yes greece i hear is is phenomenal um and turkey right there also um friends of mine have, have done that so did I he shave that. like a nike swoosh into his chest there so it looked like a shirt yeah hey, you could do it on his back <laughs> definitely uh number seven rest. go i have two friends that swear by this place they go there all the time is croatia uh another one that just seems beautiful like the history and old buildings and just kind of carved into the side of the of the world and and just i have not been there but it just from pictures that i've seen that they post every year when they go but it still looks like an incredible place to be so it doesn't sound like croatia you don't go croatia that's some place i'd really love to be but if you really look at pictures it looks pretty beautiful right you know if, if for those of you who don't know where croatia is it's like just south of like you know where like um i was i was just gonna say yugoslavia but it's not yugoslavia anymore it's sure. right it's like oh, the, it's that like eastern european but it's Co it's it's coastal. It's on the Adriatic Sea. 
Look at you with the, the, the geography lesson. Well, I know uh, that because of the, uh, you remember the show Cheers, right? Of course. It's in my team when, team tournament. Okay, so Coach was helping uh, Sam learn things, and, uh, and he did it by song. And uh, it was Albania, Albania, you border on the Adriatic. <laughs> and so uh, when that, like, happened, I was like, what? what? Oh, there it is. And that's where Croatia is. I love it. I love it. All right. Next one here. If I'm going to go tropical, I'm going the Pacific Islands somewhere. I'm going to Bali or Fiji. I, I consider them basically one and the same. It's like saying, oh, I'm going to go to St. Martin or St. Croix in the Caribbean. I'm going to Bali or I'm going to Fiji. I want to just sit there in a, you know, in a hammock all day see. long, just doing nothing. It's beautiful weather. Um, I've, I've got, uh, my sister-in-law went to, uh, to Bali twice and I've seen pictures from what she showed. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I believe in the movie Screwed with Norm Macdonald and, uh, and, uh, Dave Chappelle. I believe that's where they were going to move to, uh, when they, they, uh, fake kidnapped Norm, you know, for themselves to Norm Macdonald from the old lady is they were going to go to Bali to get some Bali booty, I believe is what they said. So it sounds like a good place to go. And Fiji, of course, the home of Survivor. So that sounds like a pretty awesome place. All right. Number five. Um, this was mine. Well, it's actually, it's my wife's, right? So shout out so to Deborah. Yours. The Rotobuzz gal. <clears throat> right, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, wherever she goes, so do my balls. So I follow. <laughs> she wants to do a photo safari in Africa. And I would love it, dude. I would absolutely love it, right? I mean, to just kind of travel through, whether it's on the Serengeti or, or wherever you're going to be. But, I mean, I have this – I've always had this huge affectation. It's so funny. The two animals – uh, in my, you know, that I'm just drawn to on a regular basis. Well, turtles are one and elephants are the other. And, you know, um, you know, my friend Jen went to Africa and, you know, was like in this, uh, this elephant sanctuary where she got to like, you know, hang out with the elephants. I want to hang out with the elephants over there. My wife wants to hang out with the tigers and the, li not the tigers, the lions. She wants to hang out with them. I want to hang out with the elephants. Just kind of like chill with those guys. I, I, I love the idea of the African safari. I just, I want to be behind some sort of Jurassic Park type of like <laughs> cage or some electricity where I know these things are not going to just come murder me. Because they're all like obviously wild animals and I don't really want to die. You know, I don't want my wife to have to go, how'd Ryan die? Tiger. You know, I don't want to go out that way. So uh, it sounds beautiful. I just want to make sure that I'm well protected away from, you know, these absolute just predators. Let's be honest. Um, I, you know, what? that's the way I'm going to go. That's the way I'm going to go. I mean, it's a good story, I guess. It's a great story, right? Seriously. Seems by Tiger. Oh, dude, my wife. How'd, how'd your wife die, Howard? Lionator. Really? <laughs> Swear to God, fucking lion just up and ate her. You can tell that story on Sirius five days a week. By, oh, easily. Easily. I could probably get some dates out of it, too. Definitely. Right? Some oh, I, I, lost my, I lost my wife. She got eaten by a lion while we were on photo safari. May I rest my head against you? And <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, all right. So that was number five. Number four, it's where I'm moving to, baby. Soon as some things happen that need to happen, Howard Bender is moving to Alaska. That's right. This is one. This my wife actually took an Alaskan cruise uh, and said how awesome it was. Uh, so that's kind of I, I also agreed with this one on the list. I always want to go somewhere. It's like a, I live in New York. Like I know what cold is. I don't really like cold, so I really want a vacation where it's warm. But I've been told this is really nice. I don't know if I believe it. I don't know if I want a vacation where it's cold. But I've been told good stories, so I I, I think that might be good to to do one time. Let me tell you about where where I'm moving to, Ryan, because you can come and visit if you like. I'd love it. So there's a uh, a city in Alaska called Sitka. S I T K A. It is in a like the very southern coastal part of alaska it's like right there on canada you know next to canada and 
It is on the edge of a uh, of a, a an Alaskan rainforest. So the weather there, it never gets colder than like low twenties, okay. and it never gets warmer than like high sixties. It rains a lot, a fair amount. It rains a bunch. Snows maybe like twenty days out of the year, at the most. It is the perfect weather for me. So you've actually you, you really thought this out. Oh, I wasn't lying when I said I'm moving, dude. I'm moving. We just okay. need a couple of couple of things to happen, which I can't really say on air. Um, because maybe some people are watching, but uh <laughs> let's put it this way. Um it uh it has to do with uh with my wife's family. Okay. Well, We'll see what happens. That's great. That's awesome. It's the same time zone, so it's you know no big. No, actually, there, right? it's uh, it's an hour behind me. Is right it now. one more hour? Okay, one no, more hour. Deal. So it's four hours behind uh, the the west coast, the east coast. So, so you'd have to just wake up one more hour earlier, which isn't a problem for you because that Frenchie text that you sent me was like before I even woke up. So God, you never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going, man. Because number got three is, is one I've been to. It's friggin' awesome. Is Ireland? Uh, I had such a blast there. Between beer and just the green, everything, cool people, great things to see, history. We took like a, flew into Dublin and just drove around the country for a week. It was awesome. The Guinness factories there, the Jameson factories there, bed and breakfasts all the time. Like it was just absolutely gorgeous. Any picture you've seen of Ireland does not do it justice. All right. Good, 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 good. Uh, number two, it's Hawaii. Uh, and best place in the world. I've never been. Most beautiful place in the world. You sit there on the beach and it's like 83 degrees every day. And just when you're like laying out and, you, and it gets a little hot, a little cloud comes and just cools you off for a second and then it goes away. And then you, it's just like, it is heaven on earth. It's really freaking expensive. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but it is worth every penny. It's a long ass flight from the East Coast, but I would do it again tomorrow. Hawaii is absolute paradise. Well, maybe next time I'll volunteer to clean, scrape mold and uh, and change air filters. and. Uh, sure. and Maybe Jen's friend can hook me up. Number one vacation destination here. I've seen a million pictures. Um, I've seen it, you know, the landscapes in the movies. I want to, I really want to go. My wife really wants to go. That's Iceland. I've heard so many great things. Yeah, it's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. Another one with better temperatures than you'd think. Uh, just, and just... Like you, like you said, pictures I've seen, stories I've heard is just absolutely breathtaking. I would absolutely love to go there if I had to go somewhere where it's not tropical. Right. And and listen, who doesn't want to just be in a city that has 82 consonants in its name? And I think uh, that those movies, uh, Hostel might have been filmed there. That's where they were like kind of set, which also sounds terrible, but kind of. Yeah. See, I was more into like the fact of like, uh, you know, Ben Stiller doing the secret life of Walter Mitty. And he ends up in Iceland, and he ends up like skateboarding down this like crazy road in this area. I don't know. Not, saw. not torture porn horror movies. Yeah, I don't need torture porn horror movies. <laughs> Sorry, can't do it. So there you go, guys. Top ten vacation destinations for Ryan and Howard, and probably for most of you as well. New York City, New Orleans, Greece, Croatia, Bali slash Fiji, an African photo safari. Alaska, my soon to be my home state, uh, Ireland, Hawaii, and good old Iceland. So, you want to drop a better fi- uh, destination for uh, for me and Ryan? Just tweet us uh, at Fighting Chance at Roto Buzz Guy hashtag Getting Buzzed hashtag Vacation Destination, uh, and maybe you know if uh, Ryan and I win the Millie Maker, maybe we'll send somebody on vacation uh, if they tweeted us with that. Uh, that being said, it is now time to bring in our guest. Very happy to have her here. You guys all know her from Fantasy Alarm. You know her from FanDuel Picks. She also does a podcast called Sticks and Stacks, which you can find on Spotify, Pandora, the SXM app, Stitcher, all the good places there. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Piacenti. Jen, what's going on? Welcome to the show. How the hell are ya? What's you? What's know, new? I'm good. I'm just kind of wondering, like, why it took so long to get an invite. 
<laughs> oh, to be invited to the show? Yeah, yeah. That'd I mean, be cool to be invited to the show. Justin Finsterman, you had cute Sam on here a couple weeks ago. I mean, you, just, you know, it's fine. Get in line. It's fine. No loyalty. They're, they're, they're more important people. <laughs> You've had I, everybody else have seen the alarm but me. It's I okay. will say I had nothing to do with the guest list ever. <laughs> ever? Kidding. What are you talking about? You brought in Gary yesterday, last week. I brought in several. I was only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jen, you know, we got to give other people a little bit of air time. You all of a sudden, you're like blowing up everywhere. Now you're you're on even more on Sirius. I'm catching videos from uh, for FanDuel picks all over Twitter. You got the player profile series going on. I mean, I'm not going to say so, you're overexposed. Aren't you all tired of this mug yet? Yes. Never. Oh, I mean, no. Bite your tongue, lady. <laughs> I, <laughs> no. No. Ryan, be nice. Also, a shout out to Rick Piacenti while we have you on. Please follow him on Twitter at Rick Piacenti for all the embarrassing photos and stories of Jen Piacenti. Which is so awesome. It really is. <laughs> it's so awesome. Jen, you know it's awesome. I mean, come on. Admit it. Having like having a father who's so happy that his, what his daughter is doing, he's so <laughs> supportive of it, that he showers you with all of this love, all of this attention. And if that means, you know, popping in a couple of pictures of you at like 11 years old. Right, holding, holding baby a little, pigs little pepe. You know, farms. somebody was like, somebody was like, when was this picture of Jen and Howard taken? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he is. You were so he, cute. He is absolutely oh, my dad goals. I mean, if I could have the relationship that you guys have with my kids when they get older, that is all I can hope for in the world. So you will. Shout out to Rick you Piacenti. Will. A little. Uh, yeah, salute yeah. let's him. do a little salute, yeah. Rick. Yeah. Thank you, so, Jen. You drinking? Yeah. So um. I have some trust, trusty water here. We can pretend like this is vodka to make it look cool because uh, uh, I, you know, I thought maybe I would have a nice glass of Chianti tonight, but I don't know. I heard you already told that I'm actually in Hawaii right now. Well, Hawaii is absolutely beautiful. It's incredible natural beauty, all these things, but they don't have sometimes some really basic things like corkscrews. So I had to go to the, the CVS, you know, I looked at, you know, and I found this, what's considered a travel corkscrew. And uh, it doesn't actually work. You can't actually leverage anything. And oh. then it actually breaks. Okay. So I actually, so I went online and I was like, you know, YouTube has a solution for everything. For God's sakes, it once taught me how to curl my hair with an athletic sock. It can teach me how to open a wine bottle. And so the big advice from California Wine Club is, Stick it between your legs and pull really hard. But guess what? It still doesn't work. So I'm having water. No no one, and the course could probably cost $23 too. It probably did. I think there's a surcharge <laughs> because they have to donate a portion of it to the sea turtles. And uh, you also have to surrender your sunscreen upon entrance to the CVS because, you know, marine life. So. But it is beautiful here. It is beautiful. But um, just pretend that this is, you know, uh, something festive. Very fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm okay with festive. Festive is nice. Yeah. Well, absolutely fantastic. So, Jen, talk to us here um, from Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Mahalo. Like, hey, do you have anybody else on the Fantasy Alarm staff that would go to Hawaii and still work like no. five billion hours? Uh, yeah, see, so you know I'm what? I'm committed. I'm dedicated. I didn't take a day off. I'll say Matt sells. <laughs> I will too. I'll double down on Matt sells. Matt sells yeah. would go to Matt Hawaii, so and shocked. he would like, yeah, like like the wife is is with the girls, yeah. and they're at the pool. And he's like, you know, I think I'm just going to go lay down for a little while. Are you okay, Matt? You feeling okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, there's a lot of sun. I'm going to go lay down. And there he is. Boom, boom, boom. Right at the Prospect keyboard. Reports. Tweaking yeah. tools. Building spreadsheets. It's true. Yeah. We have to somehow come up with a site that starts with M-A so we could do hashtag Mahalo M-A like we have with family. That's what Mahalo means. be Matt. I'll be here all week. 
<laughs> really? Because we were hoping you were leaving soon. I am. <laughs> I think there was like a like a like a time delay or something like that. Like from the time that you said they can't all be hot, winners, said, Howard. They can't all be winners. <laughs> they, they can't. But I mean, at least they could like you know kind of come in you know finish the race. Ten percent of the time. <laughs> Let's talk about Hawaii more. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Let's, let's let's talk about all the so little miss. I'm in Hawaii, but I'm doing work. So what are you working on, Jen? Um, I'm working on the player profile file videos for the NFL draft guide, as you guys know. I'm still putting out a hot corner video once a week, kind of keeping everybody updated on what's going on in Major League Baseball because Major League Baseball is not over. In fact, it's only halfway over. Oh. And if you watch this week's hot corner, I'm going to tell you, if you're in the lead right now, your lead is not safe. And if you're at the bottom, you still have a chance. Like, that's how long – and wonderful this fantasy baseball season is. So do not stop playing because everybody's going to be so distracted by the Scott Fishbowl. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. Um, take advantage. Howard mentioned the same thing in his Buzz Cuts article this week. So there's a lot going on. That will still continue to come out. All About the Curve comes out on Tuesdays, obviously. I've got daily FanDuel picks, not daily, but multiple times a week picks for FanDuel on my Twitter page, also over extrapoints.com. And uh, some serious XM shows going on here and there. I think I'm going to be with Howard next week on a show subbing for Jim Bowden. And uh, yeah, you know. And you've got stuff. a Monday night show too, right? You yeah, and yeah, that's right. Ronis and I are going to do fantasy sports tonight this week. So, um, oh, I just finished a live in game draft uh betting picks draft for oh, fsga yeah. and i have to tell you i thought yeah. it was gonna be a total train wreck it was awesome really i'm not even joking i'm not even joking it was so fun time flew it was it was a blast and i kind of want to do one of them i want to be one of the drafters next time instead of a broadcaster it was fun so let everybody know like what what this is so everybody gets like a fake budget and yeah you got a hundred dollars and you had to do live in game draft. So like you were like, okay, uh, right now, um, Phillies are going to score more than 0.5 runs in the second inning. And it's uh plus plus one fifty. I'm taking that, you know, and you can just do it as you're going. So it was three sports. It was NBA. So they've got, you know, the bucks and Suns. We had all the MLB games tonight. So we had, you know, a prep for J Hap over five and a half strikeouts, which hit only because he was facing the Tigers, obviously. Um, and then some other things like that going on. And MLS as well, which I don't know a lot about, I'll admit. But uh, it was it was actually a lot of fun. So 100 bucks, five minutes per pick. They weren't taking five minutes. They were putting these picks out fast. They were just banging them out. That's all right. Banging well, out. I'm going to have to give that a listen then because, yeah, I, I, I kind of had this, uh, this is horror show image of it just being just a, a complete train wreck. Well, because they're you know they're different books and and you know who who were, were you only allowed to to work off of like one sports book? Two books, DraftKings and FanDuel. So a big part of it, of course, was shopping, shopping for your odds. Like if you believe that Tarek Skubal is going to strike out a lot of guys, uh, how are you going to play that? Are you going to? Would you rather have the five and a half for the you know minus one forty, or would you rather go six and a half and the plus one twenty five over a DraftKings or? Or whatever. I'm, I'm being non-specific, but so part of the strategy I thought was was shopping, and then I thought, well, really, a lot of the strategy is then how good are you on your iPhone? Like, how fast can you move between apps? Because these things are changing so quickly. You know, right. you know, is Eric Haas going to get a hit this time? Well, yeah, of course he is because it's a lefty, but you know that kind of thing. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Well, all right. I'll definitely check it out, folks. De give give it a listen. If you uh if you've got SiriusXM, use the SXM app uh and search fantasy drafts and uh and you'll get all of that stuff, right? You'll get the uh the you'll FSGA drafts that went down. Uh Adam Ronis and I did the uh the props bet and futures draft, and now Jen broadcasting uh on the in-game betting. Jim Bowden plays in Fridays. He drafts Ooh. in Friday's event. 
Gym so. Drafts Friday. Also, when you're in that SXM app, that's really tricky to stay, say, by the way. SXM, like, it's really taking me a long time to be able to say that clearly. Check out the Sticks and Stacks podcast because that's going to be coming out once or twice a week, and it's going to have bets and DFS for that night, a quick 10- to 15-minute listen to help get you ready for the games. From the X app. SFM, we're going to translate to SFB. So why don't you tell us, you talked about the Scott Fishbowl. Why don't you give us a little bit, first of all, where you are in the draft to how you're feeling about your team and uh, your your group in general. Yeah, so um, I am in round 11. Is that right? Um, I don't know. Let me just go to my page. Uh, I'm round, uh, we're through 12. We're through 12. I was the number one pick. I like my team. But I will tell you that I am building my team more like I would build a GPP. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily like a lot of players I love. It's players that I think are going to do what I'm designing this team to do. And last year I was lucky enough to make it to the finals and win my conference. And so what I did was I went back and looked at what I had done, which was a combination of really just a lot of luck. It was my first Scott Fishbowl and just, you know, listening to general strategies and probably also a spreadsheet from Matt Sells, you know, those are always involved somewhere. Um, <laughs> and, and I went through and, and I said, okay, well, how can I repeat that? And I had the number one pick this year which was actually really tricky because of that third round reversal. Mm-hmm. So it was a real toss up. Do I take a running back? Do I take a quarterback? Because how long do I have to wait to take a quarterback? I'm really backing myself into a corner if I don't take a quarterback right off the bat. So I said, screw this. I'm doing neither. I'm going Travis Kelsey, baby. Started out with Travis Kelsey, big home run shot, and um, then built the team from there. And I do like it. Do you want me to kind of run down my picks for you well, who are your quarterbacks if you took travis kelsey one overall my, and you had the third round reversal my quarterbacks are matt stafford jalen hurts and um brian fitzpatrick uh, that's actually really good yeah i mean listen considering that you didn't take mahomes number one overall and you know i'm sure uh you know i, I think in the in the average league six seven quarterbacks in the first round is where everybody is so knowing that in the second round that's not bad at all yeah, and uh, to me, taking Patrick Mahomes was a fine pick, but I didn't think that he was clearly the number one at that position, to be honest. Okay. And he wasn't last year uh, in this format or really any format. Um, he's very, very good, but I I just wasn't feeling it. Travis Kelsey, I feel, is clearly the best at his position. Now, obviously, anything can happen. He can get injured, whatever. But I just figured, like, let's take that shot there because I think, you know, a Dak Prescott or a Kyler Murray could finish with more points. Even a Justin Herbert could finish with more points than a Patrick Holmes. That's within the realm of possibility. So, uh, but Travis Kelsey, I think it would be a lot harder. Darren Waller, yes, of course. George Kittle, maybe, but basically I felt like Travis Kelsey was the best way to make that GPP home run shot, like I said. Yeah. I like it. You know what? The guy yeah. in, my, in my draft, uh, same first two picks right there. Oh, Kelsey really? and Stafford. Wow. I had, okay. I had Kelsey last year, and I made it to the second round of the playoffs. So yeah, he's like yeah. good for 30 points every week in this format. I mean, we'll see. Waller was a big reason of why I got far last year, but I felt it was a little too early to take Waller. Um, so, you know, went with Kelsey, if had I been middle of the first round, I would have gone Waller probably. Um, and it was hard. I, I wanted to take Christian McCaffrey as well, like, of course, but anyway, I did what I did and I'm stuck with it now. And that means I have to use Joe Mixon, and Josh Jacobs and Melvin Gordon, but it's all good. Joe Mixon went third overall in Jim Bowden's draft. Oh my God. By Jim yeah. Bowden himself. Oh my God. Really? So- <laughs> Yeah. How did you let that happen? As oh, Jim. I, uh, well, he was, you know, it was so funny, too. Go back and listen to today's Fantasy Alarm show because he um, he threw a penalty flag at himself for botching the pick. <laughs> and not only botching the pick, but blaming it when we were back on, on the show on Monday. He was blaming, you know, that he was traveling. He was at the airport and the Wi-Fi was messed up and... And he was, he thought he saved the picks and then he didn't say and whatever. So he's like trying to like make all, you know, he's like saying everything that, that could have possibly happened that went wrong, went wrong. And today he just owned up with it. And he was just like, 
I fucked I it up. up. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier sense. to say I screwed up and it doesn't even matter how it just just screwed up. Yeah, exactly. Well, all right. Well, so that's awesome. That's fantastic. You know, you were just saying it before about the baseball season not being over. I was going to ask you about how difficult it has been for you to transition because as you know, Ryan and I were talking about before football, right? It drives the bus, it pays the bills. Yeah. Um, but you're a baseball girl, and you've been a baseball girl. I am. It's such a dirty reputation to have in this industry, apparently, to be a baseball <laughs> person. Um, yeah, it is hard. It's starting football in July, it's it's a bit early for me, and it's a little difficult for me even watching like social media, Twitter, and all this, and the people in the off season. And I feel like it's actually healthy not to stay too far into it because I see people go down rabbit holes and start making bad decisions because they're bored and they just started digging around trying to find the next big hit, and they've convinced themselves that you know Javante is a second round pick all of a sudden, things like that. So um, it is hard. I like the switch a little bit of football. It's kind of fun to freshen it up, but I'm not done with baseball yet. I still want to win those leagues and I'm still doing the daily picks for FanDuel and I have actual baseball games to watch right, right. now and, and data to work with to make intelligent and informed decisions, I hope. And in football, it's just still all conjecture and, and coach speak and uh, is this guy old, you know, and how bold of a take can I make? So you know, it's tricky. I, I think, you know, I want to make sure that I offer anybody that I am working with uh, my best analysis for football. So I am starting to dig in, but pushing it too early, you know, I want to make sure I have as much information as possible. So it's a balancing act. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I feel the same way for me, like I fought it for so long and, you know, now that I like, you know, head up the, uh, the DFS for football and it does take up so much of my time, but like my, my biggest hangup was, I felt like I was letting down subscribers and people mm -hmm. who come to me for advice. And, you know, it's like, we, we do all of this draft advice to start. And then all of a sudden it's like halfway through the season all my attention gets, you know, yanked over to football. I, I think that's kind of like, I don't know. I mean, it sounds hokey, right? I'm a man of the people kind of a thing, but I feel like I'm letting down like, you know, our MLB subscribership. Yeah, for sure. Because there are people that are like, Hey, the season is still here. And would we just check out on people that were in week 15 of their NFL season because another sport was starting? <laughs> oh no, we would not. So we have to be there for baseball. Fantasy baseball runs through September. They do overlap. So, Ryan, how are your to... fantasy baseball teams doing? I mean, I'm doing okay. In Tout Wars, I'm, I'm kind of like middle of the pack. My labor team is starting to fade a little bit, thanks to Garrett Cole and the spider tech. Uh, <laughs> I'm still doing okay. I'm not uh, doing better than I did last year. I'll say that, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. Well, Jen, one of the things, and you know, I mean, maybe this is why that you feel so slighted that we've had other guests on, but <laughs> I'm just kidding y'all. No, it's okay. Oh, we get it. We get it. You're very sensitive. You know, you're part of that, you know, millennial <laughs> generation where it's all about likes and follows and, you know, Please perpetuate the fact that I'm a millennial Howard. I will yes. send you your check later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we always like to play a little game with our, okay, let's with play our guests. So today okay. in honor of you, okay. Okay. We're play a little game. Okay. It's called fantasy karaoke. Fantasy Perfect. karaoke. I, I love this. I think that I could be good at this game. Ryan and I, we're each going to give say players. And well, I, I, you can give players to us too. Like we'll let you, we'll see who's better. Listen, we all know you've got the pipes. You're Jenny right. pipes. We know it already. But so here's what's going to happen. We're going to name a player. All okay. right. If you like this player, you have to sing his praises. Okay. I hope you that don't you pick like, players that I like. If you don't like a player, <laughs> well, then you can just kind of rant and just be, you know, grumpy oh, old lady. How about that? Okay. So I don't even have to sing. If I don't like the player, I can just be grumpy about it. 
Yes. And, but but how do I who how do we score this? Like who really wins in the end? I decide no everything. No one wins. <laughs> Nobody wins. A hundred percent. I audience. decide who the winner is. Okay. Isn't that right, Ryan? Always Howard. Always Just checking. <laughs> Ryan, would you like to give the, the first player to Let Jeff? me give the first one. All right, let me think of who I should okay. go to here. Let's go Let's go to the NFC North, a guy who had some injury problems last year and a rookie completely overshadow him, but he's getting some love this year. So let's go number one, Adam Thielen, Jen. Okay. Ooh, what a feeling. I'm drafting Adam Thielen. Oh, oh. So appealing, a sixth round Adam Thielen. Who doesn't want Adam Thielen in the sixth round? That's, uh, gimme, gimme. He's going to have 100 targets. Yeah, I got I to gotta sing the praises of Adam Thielen. I know Andrew Cooper did over in the draft guide too, so smash draft. Props for the Lionel Richie. I was, <laughs> forget about like a sixth but, round bargain. It's not a Lionel Richie. Millennial, yeah. I was. I know millennials she's... love Lionel Richie because of Ameri the reality show. He's on American Idol. His daughter. And he's oh, he's on American Idol. You're right. I watch that all the time. Obviously. That show, by the way, has made like two careers in what twenty years. When is that just going to go away? It made Sam and Cal's career. <laughs> it's like Kelly Clarkson and like one other person is. Uh, was was Underwood on that, and like everyone else has done nothing. Um. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's definitely true. So now, now, do I get to throw out a, a player to you guys? Do you sure you want to throw one at Ryan? Oh, I want to no. throw one at Ryan. All okay, right, Ryan. Um, <clears throat> let's go with Robert Woods. Oh God, I am not good at making up songs. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Robert Woods got a better quarterback and he's faster than Cooper Cup and gets lots of targets so draft him as your WR2 Ooh. Whoa. Hey, that calls I on told that you no one wants to that say. logo I, I, I loved that I thought that was an excellent <laughs> that was excellent oh. very well done Thank you. Very, very well done. Mm, very well done. So, good. so, see, I'm trying to pick players that you guys have to sing about, since the rule is if you like them. That's well, a fair. I, you know, it's a good thing I hate everybody, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good thing you hate. Everybody. I'm gonna throw a player at Jen. Here you go. You ready, Jen? It, uh, yeah, I'm ready. Are you sure? I'm ready. All right, Jen, talk to me here. Talk about shooting up the ADP charts for a rookie at the tight end position. Jen Piacenti, what do you think about Atlanta Falcons' Kyle Pitts? Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea for Kyle Pitts. I think he's really, really talented. And I think that all of you people have done exactly what I was talking about, is sit around and read your own timelines on Twitter and convince yourself that he's the best player ever. Okay, we're talking about an offense that's, yes, we're going to have Calvin Ridley, and it's not that exciting, Russell Gage, whatever, et cetera. But Kyle Pitts is still a rookie tight end. And you people are taking it second round, third round in the Scott Fishbowl. It just, you're a little bit too drunk on the Kyle Pitts, yeah, I don't know, hype train. So I like Kyle Pitts. I don't think I will actually have him anywhere because I can't ever see getting him at his actual value. If I could get him late and he overperformed, that would be great. But he's getting so pumped up. I don't see it being worth it. That's how I feel right now. But I'll, I'll, I'll dig around some more. Maybe I'll change my mind or read some more Twitter timelines. Definitely check out Fantasy Football Twitter is the definite spot to be. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, Jen, you feel free. To, you can throw a player out okay. at me if you like. Okay, um, Howard, how do you feel about Zach Wilson? Oh. oh. This is not I can't get behind Zach Wilson. I really can't. Like, I want to like him. I want to say that the Jets are moving in the right direction. 
But Zach Wilson for me is, you know, an exaggerated, you know, big hope for New York Jets. Um, he's 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 just not going to uh, – the way that they've got it going right now, he doesn't play the style of ball the conservative way that he probably needs to for his first year with the Jets. And he loves that hero ball. He loves throwing the deep pass, and he loves being that hero – who does it? And everybody's sitting there ranting and raving about how amazing he is because in the in the you know during his pro day he rolled out to the left and then he threw it to his right all the way downfield and the receiver caught it. It was amazing, was it though? There was nobody guarding the receiver. What's that? If you're a Jets fan, that would probably seem pretty amazing. No, it doesn't because there was nobody guarding the receiver and nobody was chasing him to the left anyway. So there wasn't any fear that he was going to get smacked around by a, some big defensive lineman, and any safety worth his salt in the NFL would have picked that pass off easily. <clears throat> Very green, ironic, because he's with the Jets. I can't get behind Zach Wilson. Uh, all right. So I, I didn't get a song out of you. You didn't get a, a song out of you. verse to Robert Woods is, Bobby Trees is a stupid fucking nickname. Please stop using it. So uh, what you have to do there to make that a better song is you use two words that rhymed. You just need to put them at the end. So Bobby Trees, stop calling him that nickname, please. See, and then you have more of a song. So you, you just kind of, you almost had it, Ryan. You just got to, if you're going to be on the fly, just gonna put your rhymes together. I appreciate that. All right, so here's your second one. <laughs> Is going to be your <laughs> running back, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Disappointing in his first Ooh. season. What do you feel about him in year two? I like him in year two because I think people feel like they were kind I don't of burned think by you're him. You like a song him here right you now, need young to sing lady. About it. Okay, all right. So um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your anger aside, cause you know we can survive. So when you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong. Draft Clyde Edwards to live for you, and he will be true. No, I'm, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna one. Um, I think I'm. I, didn't prepare that so if that was terrible obviously this is just a game that um was outstanding that was <laughs> that you almost got double points had you really belted out that last note like you were about to almost got double next points. time now next it's just time. now it's just like like song premium so it's point and a half <laughs> yeah i i think clyde edward Tolaire is one that um people have that feel they remember that they drafted him in the first round. He got pushed so far up the board, and then he wasn't that spectacular. But who have they got over there? They've got Clyde Edwards Hilaire. There's no reason he can't take a step forward in the second half. And I think they'll use him. And I think he's actually going at a great value. So I will dig more into the specifics of it. But I have a feeling that Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to end up being a good value this year on a really powerful offense where people are going to be much more worried about Patrick Mahomes and his myriad of receivers and my number one Scott Fishbowl pick and not as worried about stopping Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And it could be a great way. And, and we saw even last year, uh, Brazilians go to, there were certain games that he would really just completely change the game plan. Like, and, and this week, Patrick Mahomes isn't going to throw. We're just going to run it. He He's smart like that. And there are going to be, I think, probably big games for Clyde Edwards and Lair in there as well. So I, I think he's a great value. I'm going to, you know what? I'm, I'm going to score a point there for being right about CEH. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to give you an extra, like a little bonus here for use of the word myriad. Mm. Very well done. Myriad. Oh, I did use the word myriad. You did. It was very well placed as well. Very, so, very good oh, job. Yeah. 700 right. on my uh, myriad that's a mighty big word for the fantasy football uh, community oh yeah that is a big word but i think you can get an app to figure out what it means <laughs> it's called a dictionary, <laughs> a dictionary. Uh, 
All right. So you you have uh, you have one you want to give to Ryan again? Oh no. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, I want to know how you feel about uh, Joe Mixon because I'm rolling oh. with him this year. I would love to sing for you again, but I hate Joe Mixon. It is not happening. I don't know how many more times he's going to get injured or disappoint or whatever. This offense is clearly going to throw, throw, throw. They have a great quarterback. Their offensive line sucks, so he's not going to have much to get behind there. Uh, and they just have Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. And it's just weapon after weapon after weapon throwing the ball. And, and the people are taking him in the first freaking round, and I don't see it at all. Uh, I am just, I'm very, 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 very anti Joe Mixon. No, huh. not good for me. Sorry. No. Did that, did I wasn't that targeting him, to? but uh, it did not go the way I wanted to. No, I wasn't targeting him either. But uh, again, as I was saying, GPP build. I think, you know, they got rid of Giovanni Bernard. They do have all those other weapons, as you mentioned. So there's a real possibility that Joe Mixon could be a superstar this year. Um, and be a real bell cow back. And uh, so I think it's worth taking a shot. It, yeah, I, I'm not, I wasn't targeting him and I don't think I will continue to target him anywhere, but I think it's entirely possible that he can end up like, Hey, top five. He could There's get There's a real chance I could be a millionaire by the end of the week too. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Harsh burned. All right. Well, here you go. Last one from me, Jen. Now, this one okay. could be worth double points if it's done properly, unless, okay. of course, you don't like this player. I don't know. Okay. But I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that I think you do. Because I'm going okay. to your boys. Cowboy. That's right, your cowboys. And I was thinking long and hard. Do I go with the quarterback? Do I go with a wide receiver? For that. Do All I right. try to confuse her and go tight end? Or do I just say... Talk to me about that cereal eating motherfucker, Zeke Elliott. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, I love the run, babe. Don't you know it's true? Bell cowboys that run, babe, in silver and blue. Targets, snap, share. Targets. Snap share. I don't want nothing but run, babe. I'm drafting Zeke. I'm drafting Zeke. I love him. Eight is ADP. And how I'm going to win my league. I play him every <laughs> Sunday behind a strong line. Dak will have his fun days. And Zeke gone soup will dine. Targets, snap, share, I'm dying. Targets, <laughs> snap, This has already exceeded I'm expectations, I think. But runs, babe. I'm drafting Zeke. I'm drafting Zeke. Did I win? Man, 100%. I thought my Robert Woods song was good until I heard that one. Did I win? You, you won. You Except won. Was, you don't even have to give me. I was trying not me... to laugh the whole time, so it wasn't very good singing. But I think it was it was spectacular, Jed. I think everybody listening loved that. Right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> For, like that's I, I I couldn't even even if I even if I belted out an operatic aria uh, on on some player, it just wouldn't even come close to that. that was, it's hard that to do it with a straight face watching you guys, but um, I'm I'm glad. How did that work out? Very well done. Very well done. <laughs> Why did we wait so long to bring her on? We should have brought her on. Listen, I told every him time I suggested Miley. bring on Jen, you were like, really? Oh, really? really? After I had you on my show, Ryan Hallam, like, I'll I I'll send you that. the emails, Jen, of how much bullshit that is. I know it's, I know it's not true. I know you love me. Absolutely. Oh, did you mean this, Jen? Why would you spell her name with a G? <laughs> it makes no sense. Because I... it's getting buzz. G I N. Oh. Ooh. Or water. Sometimes water. Or water. You know well, what? I'm. I got. I got. I got. I mean... I mean... I mean... Ah. I'm sorry. Jen. 
What you got? I got screwed. <laughs> you got screwed? By what? By what? By you guys waiting to invite me on here. Oh, really? <laughs> No. Just, I'm, just teasing. I'm just a pawn. You see the things. This is getting buzzed with Howard Bender. I'm just kind of the the guy who's on here. I'm not even on the. I'm not even on the promo stuff. You're right? not even on the promos. No. Hey, listen, you see when this thing starts? It's it's getting buzzed with Howard Bender with Roto Buzz guy. I am setting Ryan up for a career in handing out big checks at Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> he is destined for that now. Send one my way because you're going to have to send one in honor of Joe Mixon. <laughs> oh, Jen, an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now you can go back to scraping mold and changing air filters in Hawaii. Yeah, and I have to go back to studying football. Go but back I and. Love it. <laughs> that was terrible. Well, that sound right last there, call. that means last call. So. Jen, we're going to say good night. Thank you good so night. much. Don't be such a stranger next time. <laughs> last call. Last call. All right, so here we are at last call. Again, big thank you to Jen Piacenti for, uh, for, for joining us here on the show, for bringing the heat with the voice. Ryan, that voice. How unbelievable is that voice? Your voice, Ryan. I mean, it was like, it was like a combination of Fergie and Jesus, yeah. but... She was angelic. Fergie and Jesus wrapped in shit, I think, uh, kind of is how you put my voice together. But yes, absolutely. Jen can sing uh, with some of the best I've ever heard and always appreciate the fact that she not only joined us after we've asked her repeatedly to join the show, uh, but uh, also to, to bust a few pipes for us as well. Right? She kept saying, she was like, oh, I'm busy on Thursday. I can't record. Right? She didn't say that tonight, did she? No. No. Um, all right, my final rant here, and this is more like, you know, I just, I'm venting to you here, Ryan, because okay. if I say this out to the world, somebody's going to be like, no, you can't, you're pandemic and saving money and blah, blah, blah. Euro 2020, right? They're playing Euro 2020 right now, and this weekend is the championship between Italy and England, right? Right. Ryan, what year is it right now? It is. Uh, that'll be 2021, Hammer. Why are we calling it 2020? Listen, 2020 was last year. Pandemic. I get it. Are you sons of bitches so cheap that you can't, like, I don't know, give the shirts away to countries who need, like, you know, old 2020 T-shirts and stuff like that? Get new keychains? Get rid of all of that stuff that you probably, like, purchased for you know, Euro 2020, that you, like, just had to save everything, and now here in a year later, now you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing Euro 2020. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If the U.S. did that, the rest of the world would shit all over us, because we're, you know, listen, we suck anyway. We know that, like some of us do, right? Well, we know the whole world's laughing at us. But if we did something like that, we were like, ah, oh, no, you know, we don't want to like spend any more money on, you know, merchandise. We've printed out all of these flyers. They all say 2020. Like, I'm sorry, man. I think that that is, it's garbage. It's Bush League. It's terrible. And it's, yeah, I'm sure people would be like, Howard, who gives a shit, right? They're not wasting money, but yeah, you know what? I don't need the reminder that this was all supposed to happen last year. There was a lot of stuff that was supposed to happen last year, and it didn't happen. So why are we going back? Move on, Euro 2021. I don't even know what to call it right now. now I, I, hope, I hope it ends in a draw. I hope the whole thing ends in a draw. First of all, I don't think anyone outside of this country is watching us. So I'm going to say soccer sucks. 2020 sucked like who wants to like oh yeah 2020 that's a good time to remember that was a good old time remember when we all sat in our houses 
for for the entire year and wondered if we we're all gonna get sick and die and all that. Yeah, so let's they should have just put that behind us. The Olympics, I don't believe, is trying to be Tokyo 2020. Like I think everyone wants to just kind of erase 2020 as much as humanly possible. All these show TV shows have come back and had like masks and COVID episodes. Like no one wants to see that. We're all trying <laughs> to get this behind us. So soccer. Uh, F you, it's 2021. Let's just move on if anyone's watching you at all. There you go. There you go. That's going to do it for tonight's episode of Getting Buzzed. Big thanks to our producer, Matt Sells. Big thanks to Jen Piacenti for, uh, for joining us here and singing the crap out of those songs. Great stuff. Uh, Ryan, always a pleasure. Uh, I will meet you. In Iceland one day. Oh, perfect, man. We'll go. Next week. Let's just do it next week. I'm busy next week. Sorry. Okay. In any event, don't forget, folks, get the fancy alarm ML, uh, NFL draft guide. MLB, it's still going on. Don't leave that out, but NFL draft guide, fancyalarm.com slash draft now. Promo code draft now. Enjoy. For Ryan Hallam, I'm Howard Bender. This has been Getting Buzzed. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>